Corn Center. Today's lecture is Keep Moving Dirt, uh, talking about building sustainable systems for habit adherence. Quick overview. Uh, it's important to note that we will always fall to the level of our systems. So it's important that we we'll always prioritize our systems over our goals. This will include, um, when we're talking about sustainability, typically when we talk about systems, they're consistent habits over time, whereas goals, they're typically thought of as like wishes uh, of grandeur, so to speak. We also wanna make sure we prioritize the environment we're in over motivation, right? Obviously you've heard the sayings, surround yourself with success, okay? Again, this will be very important towards habit creation. And of course, we need to understand basic human behavior. So for example, what we find easy and enjoyable, we are more likely to do. What we find difficult and unsatisfying, we are less likely to do. And it's important to note that our internal dialogue can also make or break habit formation. So for example, we might say, I'm not good at exercise, but a simple change of words to say, I'm learning how to exercise can put us in the internal framework of identifying as an exerciser versus someone who's on the outside trying to try exercise. All right, it's important to note as well, whether with a spoon or the shovel, just move the dirt. We're always gonna talk about the 1% better mentality. So systems versus goals. A goal is what you want to do, whereas a system is how you do what you do, right? So for example, your habits. And we're gonna talk about the four pillars that make a sustainable system. Number one, we wanna make habits obvious. Number two, we wanna make our habits attractive. Three, we wanna make our habits easy. And four, we wanna make our habits enjoyable. So in the coming slides, we're gonna use an example of someone looking to read more, right? Whether it be books or articles or et cetera, right? In this example, we're gonna focus on someone wishing to read more frequently. So in the first pillar, make our habits obvious, right? What we're trying to do is essentially hide our tasks in plain sight to ensure habit recognition, all right? There's two ways we can go about this. The first is what we call habit stacking. So for example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add what you want to do into what you already do. And using the book example for uh, this example, we're gonna talk about if you already drink a cup of coffee, every time you do that uh, habit, you're gonna add a habit. In this case, you're gonna read your book, right? So you drink a cup of coffee, then you read your book. What we're doing is you're building on what you already do with what you desire to do. The second point here is obvious cueing. So essentially you're gonna set up your environment for success. In this example, you're going to put your coffee mug out on the counter with your book you want to read right next to it. And of course, over time, you will begin to associate what you already do with what you want to do. Using the same example, your normal cup of coffee will eventually lead you to reading your book. Okay. Second pillar is we want to make our habits attractive. So the environment and rewards will make your desired habit tempting. And again, two things we can do here. The first we'll talk about is social environment. If you surround yourself with those who enjoy what you want to do already, it'll be easier for you to form that habit on your own. For example, if you're looking to read a book, you might join a book club or you might go to a cafe or surround yourself with like-minded people who enjoy reading as a pastime. Okay, The social acceptance or norm will tempt new habits to develop. Again, focusing on this, surround yourself with those who want to be successful. Second point to this, reward stacking. So kind of building on our first point, uh, on the previous slide, we're going to add a reward for completion on top of your already daily habits. So again, the example, we're going to drink a cup of coffee that you already do. You're going to read your book, which is your desired habit, and then you're going to take a relaxing bath after. Okay, so essentially using the reward mechanism, rewarding a desired habit with an enjoyable, positive action to reinforce behavior. Reading your book or your desired habit earns you an enjoyable bath or your reward that you picked for yourself. It's important to note here that we want to make sure that we pick rewards that are not conflicting. So for example, if someone's looking to exercise, you wouldn't reward yourself with something uh, negative towards that goal. So for example, if you're exercising, you probably won't reward yourself with, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts or something of that nature, right? We want to make sure that kind of lines up parallel to our desired habit. Pillar number three, we want to make our habits easy, okay? We know that tasks easier to complete will build necessary confidence to continue development. Again, two points to this, an accessible environment. We want to ensure the path of least resistance. So for example, you might set up your coffee maker the night before and put your book next to your coffee mug, right? The less steps lead to less resistance and of course, less chance of failure, right? By preempting your environment, you're making it A, obvious, and B, um, easier for you to accomplish your habit without too much resistance. Okay, second point here, the two minute rule. We want to start small. We want to ensure our habit can be completed in a very short time frame. So for example, you drink a cup of coffee, you read three pages of your book. 
Quick, easy tasks will lead to a desire to build on them. For, so for example, reading three pages makes you want to keep reading or add more for next time, right? Pretty much you want to stop while you're ahead, okay? This desire to build will make sure you come back the next time with the same level of excitement as you were the first time, okay? Lastly, the fourth pillar, we want to make our habits enjoyable, okay? Consistent completion leads to a feeling of satisfaction. In this, in this case, we want to talk about tracking our habits. So for example, we might mark down every time we complete your habit. So you might use a calendar or something of that nature. You can put a check mark when you read your book. And this visual completion representation of progress uh, leaves us with a desire, or sorry, a feeling of satisfaction. Of course, this helps us focus on not breaking the chain. Okay. So in closing, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we're actually easy on ourselves when we talk about these habits, okay? As we know that we fall to love our systems, while it is hard, we want to make sure that we rewire in the best way possible. And of course, this means making it as easy on ourselves as possible. And know that things will go off track at times. But, like I said earlier, we want to rely on those systems we're trying to create, okay? A good habit is try not to miss more than once. So we want to stop the snowball with a flamethrower. And of course, as you said in the beginning, whether using a spoon or a shovel, keep moving dirt. The 1% better mentality. Success is not one big breakthrough moment. Success is an accumulation of reliance on sound systems and habits. Okay, as we talked about, 1% better every day will add up, start small, and just understand that if you don't actually enjoy the journey, the destination will not be much better. That's it for this presentation, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us via email, info at armforms.ca, or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel for the latest and greatest in track conditioning. Until next time, guys, take care.